equation of the plane. The simple ones, if you know the intercepts, then you can do it like this. Have I shown you this trick before? I think I did with a two dimensional thingy, right? So X intercept when Y and Z are both zero, then you get four, right? And then when X and Z are zero, you get Y is equal to three and likewise C two. Further, further, suppose we want the equation of this line right here in the YZ plane, right? Then you just set X equal to zero and that happens to be equation of that line. Equation of this line, you set y2 equal to 0, and then you get all those things too, right? And then all you have to do is multiply common denominator on both sides. So multiplying 12 here, so we have 3x plus 4y plus 6z is equal to 12. Maybe I shouldn't have multiplied 12, right? We should have multiplied, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that is right, actually. OK, how about that? Any questions before we do something more complicated than this? Because that was a very simple case. Now, say we want to just have any space plane. OK, first thing is you can see me, right? How do you determine a plane in space? Here's a plane. How do you fix this? Huh, right? Do you remember this kind of question from your geometry teacher? Plane is floating in the space like this, and you want to fix this. Eh? Fix that. Learn to speak. Fix this. If you fix one point, then plane will do this. Right? Two point, you can rock back and forth. You can fix it. It takes minimum of three points. Right? But better way, better way, because we have you have seen from the equation of a space line. The other better way is you can fix one point, then you can do this, but it doesn't translate anymore. Then you give a direction. And what is the direction of the plane? Because if you put the vector, directional vector like this, then you have infinitely many. So what you have to do is this is the directional vector. You get it? It's kind of like satellite dish idea. Do you see it? So the directional vector of the plane is perpendicular to the plane. So in a way, this is still point slope form. The point that you're fixing and the direction slope idea. You get it? So that's what we are going to do. <coughs> so suppose we have a plane. Say we have a space plane that looks like this. OK, and then suppose we have. And then point I used in Dropbox note is one, three, four. And I'm going to give a vector notation one, three, four. Why am I giving vector notation? That means there is a position vector pointing at this from somewhere in the origin, right? Let's say it's there to that point like that. Okay. I mean, you have done this in pre-calc. That's like X, Y, Z coordinate right there. You get it? So far so good. Now let's give a direction of this thing, right? That's what we call N. N I think they were called n your, in your pre calc class too. n is the perpendicular vector that this thing, let's just say n is that way. Why did I choose? Ah, blue. I don't like green color that much. And for normal vector, normal meaning perpendicular, 8, and then let's say this is 8, 3, negative 2, just to be consistent with your Dropbox note. OK, now this thing is perpendicular to every point, every vector on that plane. So far with me. So idea is this. I need a, uh, well, if I fix this direction, 
And then there's this normal vector and there's another vector on this. It's perpendicular, so OK. Let's see if I can animate this thing to that effect. Say we have another vector. Coming from here. Right, and then your normal vector needs to be perpendicular to all of these vectors in the plane. You know what I'm saying? And this thing will just sweep around and create the plane. And this plane is infinitely big. You get the picture here? Say that arbitrary point is right there. Okay, and that thingy, I'm gonna running out of colors now. Ah, green it is. Okay, that green vector is any arbitrary vector on the plane. And this point right here, I'm gonna call it, since it has a freedom to move around, I'm gonna call it X, Y, Z. So far, so good. You get the picture. Now that X, Y, Z is really, I'm gonna move this thing out of the way because I need that space. I'm going to move that point, coordinate point on that side. That's a vector notation too, right? So that vector is not X, Y, Z. That is some other vector. X, Y, Z means this vector. Position vector starting from the origin. What am I doing? Position vector starting from the origin and pointing there. And that I'm going to make it black. Right, that is X, Y, Z vector. So far, so good. And I'm going to change the color of these guys now to color code this. So this is X, Y, Z. Any coordinate point can be vectorized, meaning position vector from the origin to there. And this vector is 1, 3, 4, which is our given vector that we have to fix the plane on. So you're given a point and you're given a direction. You get it? Now we have to give a equation of this plane. OK, the key here is that green vector is perpendicular to our normal vector, because normal vector is perpendicular to everything on that plane. Good. Now let's calculate that green vector. This green vector I'm going to call A. How's that? So far with me. So A, let's calculate A. What is A? We, this is a vector difference, isn't it? Is this vector minus that vector A? Do you agree? Vector subtraction, I told you, is very, very important picture. So that vector is X minus 1, Y minus 3, and Z minus 4. Capish? Now we're done. Then all we have to do is say, how do we express that these two vectors are perpendicular? Vector N and vector A need to be perpendicular. How do you want to say that? Mathematical expression would be nice. Oh no. That's how you say it, right? Dot product is equal to zero because that's n magnitude a magnitude cosine theta, isn't it? And cos magnitudes are not zeros because they are not zero vectors, meaning cosine theta must be zero, meaning theta is 90. That's that. Good. Oh, well, we have both vectors. Shall we dot them? Let's dot them. So vector n is 8, 3, negative 2, and dot that with x minus 1, y minus 3, and z minus 4. And set it equal to 0. Then we have 8, x minus 1, and plus, remember how you, you to take a dot product, right? You multiply the each coordinates, then add. So y minus 3, and minus 2, and then z minus 4. Wait a minute. Does that remind you of point slope form in 3D? 
it kind of does look like Poin's law form now, doesn't it? Especially if you divide everything by two and then bring this to the other side. Oh my God, this is what it is. Oh. So maybe we don't have to go through this anymore. If you have a direction and a point, then we can just write it. But don't memorize it. This is where it came from, okay? This is a very important picture. Okay, then let's put it in standard notation, standard form, 8x. So we have 8x plus 3y minus 2z is equal to 9, right? Too much algebra? So far, so good. Okay, we'll develop the formula. Not that you will ever use this formula, but hey, it's good to know. So let's redo what we just did with symbols now, okay? You with me? Okay, same picture. Say we have this plane. Okay, and say we have a point on the plane. And this time I'm not going to draw that position vector. I'll just write x naught, y naught, z naught. Meaning there's a position vector pointing towards that point somewhere from the origin. Okay, we usually omit that part. And then we give a direction. Say our direction, normal vector, is in that direction like that. So first so good. Say yes. Okay, and say we have another point on that vector right there, and I'm gonna call that x, y, z. So this is a variable. This point can move around anyway. It could be anywhere on this plane. And then I'm gonna create the vector connecting these two dots. So, no, oh no. From here to here. Okay. Let's give a name to that vector. What should we call it? We don't want to call it A because we used A already, right? Oh, actually, I haven't, but see, I'm going to call this thingy N ABC. So that red vector, we can call it R, right? That vector right there is R. And tell me what R is. X minus X naught, Y minus Y naught, and Z minus Z naught, eh? Are you okay with the setup? You with me? Okay, now we are ready to do this. Okay, that being said, then all we have to do is just start them, right? So let's start these two. So what we say is here, n dot r is equal to zero. So if we take a dot product, n is equal to abc, and dot it with x minus x naught, y minus y naught, and z minus z naught n is equal to zero. So first so good. Now taking a dot product, so we have a x minus x naught plus b y minus y naught and c z minus z naught. Oh, lo and behold, this does look like that point slow form now, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to expand this out, but before I expand it, I need to move this vector out of the way. I'm going to put it somewhere here. Okay, this R is right. I'm going to just write R. Then I realize it's in wrong color, right? Why am I so angry? Okay, that's R, and then expression of R is down here. Okay then, now I'm going to multiply this out actually. 
Okay, so we have AX plus BY plus CZ minus AX naught minus BY naught minus CZ naught is equal to zero. Correct? Say yes. Okay, and you know this, this thing right here, including minus sign. All of that are constants, right? So we can call this something else like D. And whether you want D on the other side or this side, it doesn't matter depending on your preference. But let's just put it in general form just to give you something looking different. So AX plus BY plus CZ plus D is equal to zero is what they call the general form of a plane. How about that? Good. OK. Generally, if you know what you're doing, you can start right here in this line. You see the normal vector ABC happens to be the coefficients of these. And then everything else looks like slope, point slope form. But let's not memorize this, OK? Because once you memorize and you forget the meaning of it later, oh, wait, where does that? OK? Oh, I forgot the perpendicular symbol, which I can draw right there. OK, what time does this period end? 45, OK. Uh, there's a little confusing problem, which is the intersection of the two planes in the book and uh, you have to find the whatever they do is horrible so let me address that intersection of two planes okay intersection of two planes okay Suppose you got the plane one, 2x plus 5y minus c is equal to 3. And then suppose you have 3x minus 6y plus 4z. I don't know where I got this example. I, maybe I just made it up on that year or is it from the book? I don't know. Okay, and then they go through some weird, weird method. Forget it. Do you see this is a systems of equation? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Let's solve that systems of equation and we have to understand what that means. I'm going to call this equation one and I'm going to call this equation two. Line one, line two thing in your chapter seven in your pre-calc. And let's eliminate which one is, oh, let's eliminate Z. Z is the easiest one to eliminate, right? So our little matrix or times line one and you add it to line two, right? You notice this, not, you understand this notation? I'm going to multiply 4 to this and add it vertically, but I don't, I'm don't. i too lazy to rewrite it. So, okay. If you do that, do we get 11x plus 14y is equal to 19 then? We eliminated z. So far, so good. And this is where it gets a little bit ugly, but let's just solve for y. y is equal to then, uh, how do you you want to do this 19 over 14 minus 11 over 14 yeah this is ugly like that eh? so far so good right okay now and maybe in your pre-calc you didn't quite understand this weird weird prior a and thing but since we know the equation of space line, let's just create equation of space line because two lines intersect at a line anyway, right? And then conveniently, I'm going to call just x t. Many books in English actually use x as a x as a parameter, but that's confusing. So t, we are used to t. And then that tells you y is equal to 19 over 14 minus 11 over 14 T8. Ain't that convenient? Guess how we're going to find Z then? You plug both of this back into one of these equations. You get it? 
Which one do you want to plug it into? Number one, right, of course. So what we have is 2x, which is t, plus 5, and y, which is right there, 19 over 14 minus 11 over 14x, which is t now. T is what we are looking for, is equal to 3, right? And if you solve for this z and a bunch of algebra later, I'm running out of time, so just write down. You get this. I'm pretty sure you can handle that algebra. And this happens to be the equation of this space line going through those two planes. Ah, uh, running out of time, so I'm taking out the fully cooked turkey. This is in your Dropbox note. But two, two planes intersect and then there's a line going through it. You cannot see it that well, but that line going through it happens to be this parametric equation. How about that? This is by far the easiest way. And in case you have space curves, space surfaces, then you do exactly the same thing. If you find the intersection of the two, then you have a space curve. Take three. I'm going to cut all of this out now. So suppose we, we are looking for a distance from the point to a plane. Suppose we have a point right here and everything is a vector now, right? Two, eight, five is our vector coordinate. And suppose the equation of the plane is x minus 2y minus 2z is equal to 1. We need to find the distance from that point to this plane, which means perpendicular distance like this, right? That's what I'm looking at. That's what we call D. Because otherwise, this could be infinitely long, eh? Okay. So how are we going to find this perpendicular distance? Okay. We just need any point on this plane. Let's say there. And what is the easiest way to find any random point, any random coordinate will not work. It has to satisfy this equation of the plane. So the easiest way I propose is just is put zero into two of the variable, let's say y and z, and calculate one last one. How's that? Do you all see this is a one zero zero then? Do you see this point has to be one zero zero? You can also go with zero and negative one half and zero, but why would you want to do such a thing? Yell with me? Okay, just put insert zero into two of the variable and calculate the third one. Now we create a vector, okay? And that vector is starting from this point to our given point. Okay, you with me? Okay, I'm going to call this vector, what should we call it? Give me a name. R. Oh, R. This vector R, of course, is 1, 8, 5, right? Do you see it? Now, of course, the magnitude of this vector cannot be the distance because this is on a, say, look at this as a right triangle. It's a hypotenuse, right? We want this side. Okay, so we need to project this vector into something. What is a perfect thing to project this on? Somebody say it. The normal vector, which is all always perpendicular to our plane. You get it? Okay, now somebody tell me what this normal vector is. Equation of the plane is x minus 2y minus 2z is equal to 1. So therefore the normal vector, the way we created plane in the first place is dot product. Oh my god. You guys are still sitting instead of flying. You need to really flap your wings and fly with me. We're in 3D, well into 3D now. 
you see why that's the normal vector? And our distance that we want to find is this thingy. This is our D. Do you see that's the same D as this D right here? Do you see this is a rectangle? How about that? So having said that, our D is equal to, this time absolute value, <coughs> in case we get cosine that is more than 90 degrees. So we have R cosine theta, and theta is this angle right there. Good. And once we write this, this should trigger your memory. This is same as N R cosine theta over N magnitude, eh? When we drop the vector symbol, that automatically means magnitude. I have this absolute value in order to make sure this is a positive distance because cosine theta could be negative. And the numerator is a dot product, isn't it? So n dot r magnitude absolute value over n. How about that? This is not a mag vector magnitude thing. This is just a regular absolute value because dot product gives you a scalar. So far, so good. And this is what we call the component that we did before, but it's an absolute value of the component. Okay, so let's start these two. Oh, that didn't go nicely. Okay, so we are dotting not with this, N and R, you get it? So you have absolute value one, and we have minus 16, and then they are minus 10 over this thingy. Is it square root 9? I know I designed it like that. You with me? So we have 25 over 3 is the distance from that point to that plane. Questions? Okay, this is what I expect you to do each time. Actually, this is easier than the formula that I'm about to derive. This formula, we should know how to derive it, but we never use it ourselves, okay? Ready? Okay. So I'm gonna create the same thing. I'm gonna copy that plane and reuse it. <coughs> okay. So we have a much of the same picture. And this time, and the thing about this formula is it needs to be written in general form. AX plus BY plus CZ plus D, general form meaning that everything has to be on one side, right? And then we need a point in space. So let's say that's our point. And that's X1, Y1, and Z1. Good. Okay, now, and then we need a point here, right? Remember, call y not z naught, and we can do it that way, but I like this way better. We can just plug in 0 for y and z as we did before and compute x. You know what I'm saying? So that x needs to be negative d over a. Do you see that? And the other two are zero, zero. You with me? Okay, now we create a vector. Same way we did. Connecting this point that we just calculated to this given point. Say yes. And then that we'll call R. That R is now X plus D over A, and then Y and Z, one, one. We don't need a comma after Z. You with me? Who's lost? Okay, now we need to 
find the component of this, project this thing onto normal vector. And that normal vector is perpendicular to the plane like this always. So that's our normal vector. And this normal vector will be, of course, A, B, C, A. Okay, now what we want is this perpendicular distance. Okay, let's go get it. So that D is same way you are cosine theta, A, theta being this angle right here. And R cosine theta over n, a eh? exactly same way as before. Now this numerator is absolute value of n dot r over n, a. Eh? Okay, now let's start it. This is where the real calculation happens. So n dot r. So we have a x one plus a times this, which is plus d, you with me? You with me? And b times y1 plus c times z1 over square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Let me just rearrange the numerator so it's prettier. AX1 plus BY1 plus CZ1 plus D over square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. Oh my God, that looks familiar to you? Remarkably, this thingy looks like an equation of the plane, but instead of XYZ, we substitute x1, y1, z1, whatever the given point. And then this is, of course, the magnitude of the normal vector. Questions? OK, this line, I'm going to throw this line. Say we have a line passing through somewhat in space like that. Good? OK. Now we need the point 602. OK? 602. Well, and that point is not on this, right? So let's say 602 is somewhere here. Wait, you notice that I did one side a vector component and the other side the parenthesis? Yeah, let's not do that. Okay, vector. All the points are vectors in this business from now on. Okay, now, what did we need in order to figure out the equation of the plane yesterday? We need a point and we need a direction. Direction meaning normal vector, right? Okay, we have a point. We'll use this point. I mean, any point on this line will do, but let's use this point, okay? Now, how do we get the vector that is perpendicular to the whole thing. Let me draw that normal Mr. vector. Kim, is it not negative two? Yes, it is. Thank you. That almost blew up in my face. Uh oh. This computer is really laggy today, negative two. Good. Let me draw that vector for you, normal vector, because we're going to need this, right? Let's say our normal vector is like in that direction. Like that, OK? I'm going to draw that in black. So this is a normal vector. And we still are yet to figure out the component of that vector. And that's what we need. Once we have a normal vector and the point, then it's almost like point slow form. Ideas. How do you create a vector that is perpendicular to our plane? 
Meaning perpendicular to every single vector on this plane is the idea now, isn't it? What we need is just any two vectors. If we have any two vectors, then we can cross them and create a perpendicular. One of the property of the cross product is it's perpendicular to the first two that you are crossing. You know what I'm saying? So let's create any vector that we will do. OK, before we do that, ah, I need a point on this. Well, let's calculate a point right there. That's when t is equal to zero. Somebody tell me that point. T is equal to zero from here. Uh, four, three, and seven. Four, three, seven. Do you see why that point is there on this line when t is equal to zero? Guess what another point I'm going to use? T is equal to, what's the next nice number to zero? One. I mean, any t, t value will do, but zero and one being my favorite numbers, right? Somebody tell me the coordinate right there then. We plug in one. Two, two eight, and eleven. Two, eight, and eleven. You with me? We are not really there yet because that is the vector from the origin somewhere, right? What we need is a vector from this point. So what I need is this. I need this vector and I need this vector. You know what I'm saying? OK, we'll call these vectors R1 and R2. How's that? Zoom in a little bit. So R1. Oh, we, we'll call this vector. My pen is not working. R, really? I don't get this computer. We'll call this thing R Z not zero. And this thing R one. How about that? You know what I'm saying? So R zero, we subtract this. We subtract this minus this, right? So do you see we get negative two, three, and Nine right there. You with me? Okay, R1 then. R1 is this minus this now, right? So we get negative four, eight, and 13. Are you with me so far? Say yes. Okay then. Now we are ready to calculate n. I'm going to do it on the side. Vector n has to be r1 cross r0. It's OK to do it the other way, but I wanted to have this visualization going. This is perpendicular here, and it's perpendicular here as well, right? So right-hand rule, direction of that vector, the way it's written. So far with me? Okay, so that thingy is cross product is done by i, j, k here. And then r1 is negative 4, 8, 13. And then r2 is negative 2, 3, and 9. So far with me? Okay, let's compute this. I'm going to Okay, cross product, I mean the determinant, so I, this minus this. You with me? And J is the negative one, so what I do is this minus that. You get it? Whatever, this minus that, you, 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 you. 10, I think I'm doing this right. K, so this minus this, four. Let me know who's lost. Now we can just move on to the point slope form, but however, I like to derive it, take it old fashioned way one last time to emphasize where these things all come from. 
Okay, so I'm going to derive it. In order to derive it, I need one more vector. I'm going to create one more vector. Okay, that vector. What color do you want? Uh, green. So this coordinate right there is X, Y, Z. Okay, and I'm going to name this vector R. And R then is equal to X minus 6, Y minus 0, and Z minus negative 2. And the definition of the plane is this. This N and R needs to be perpendicular. You get it? A normal vector needs to be perpendicular to everything on that plane. So your N, of course, is uh, 33 times X minus 6 plus 10 and x y minus 0 and 4 z plus 2. How about that? Good. Okay, then if we convert it into slope and intercept form, uh, this is the challenging part. Why don't I just look it up? This gives you 33x plus 10y plus 4z is 190. I didn't really calculate this in my head. Okay, how about that? Questions? Ne? Okay, then let's do the next one. So, next one. Plane passes through this point. And it contains the intersection of these two. Okay. Two planes intersect at a line, right? So if you figure out that intersection, which is the equation of the line, then it's exactly the same problem as 35 now, isn't it? Yeah. So remember yesterday, intersection is always systems of equation. So let's do that first, shall we? Okay, so one plane is x plus y minus c is equal to 2, and the other plane is 2x minus y plus 3z is equal to 1a. Eh? Oh, let's add and eliminate y, shall we? So we have 3x y dies plus 2z is equal to 3a. Eh? Okay, I think I'm going to solve for x. So we have 1 minus 2 over 3z, 8. Say yes. So equation of the line now is this. We'll say z is equal to our t. Then my x is equal to 1 minus 2 third T. You with me? And then how do we get Y? Well, we plug both of them here. So you plug that thingy here and T here. So Y turns out to be 1 plus 5 over... What is that? I cannot read my own writing. Can somebody calculate this? Is it 8? How about that? Say yes. Say something. If you're lost, now is the time. Okay. Now, so let's draw it then. Okay. I'm going to draw that line in green. So should we draw exactly same picture as previous one? Yeah. Say that green line is like that. Okay. And we have a point. Uh, Mr. Kim, it's actually five thirds. 
But the, oh, oh like my God, right? I cannot read my own handwriting. This is third. Thank you. Good. And now I have a point. My point is, uh, what is it? Let's say that point is here. Negative one, two, one. Good. And then we create two vectors connecting it. So let's say those vectors look like this. One here and another one here. Uh, now it's perfect. Okay, and let's write those two vectors. This one, this point is when t is equal to one, and that point is then one, one, zero. Eight. Say yes. And this point is when t is equal to one. Oh, what? Well, t is equal to zero for the first one. And that is you, 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 you. Let's not do t is equal to one. Because I am not a fan of this denominator. So let's do t is equal to three. How's that? Right? It's infinitely better choice. You agree? So if you plug in 3 here, then you will have 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. And if you plug in 3 here, then you have 6. And then you plug in 3 here, so you get 3. Aha! So much better, eh? Okay, then we need R1 and R2. Running out of space here, right? I'll just label it. This is R, oh, R0, and this is R1, okay? Now I'm going to compute those vectors here. Um, would it be okay to label it like R3 or like R1? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is NT is equal to 3. Yeah, good point. Let's label it like that. Or you can just do subscript one, R1 and R2, A and B, whatever. We just need those two vectors, right? So R0 is one, this point minus this point, right? So we have two, negative one, and negative one. So far, so good. Okay, and then R of three. Minus that one, so you have zero and four and two. You with me? Now our n is just cross product of these two. And order really doesn't matter, although I'm going to draw it this way. And then I'm going to show you another neat trick. So this thing, let's say, and it's like that. Are you getting the hang of this 3D drawing trick? This is my N. You have to be really talented at this. Okay, so my N then needs to be this thingy plus this thingy. Right? And instead of rewriting, all you have to do is just imagine little i, j, k here. And then think of this as a determinant. You know what I'm saying? Then we can just write down our answer. How neat was that? So i, this minus this, right? Is it 2? Is it negative two? Yes, my, no, it's two. And J, J is negative one, so I'm gonna do this minus this, right? Wait, no, 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 I think I screwed up I. I is this minus this. No, I was right the first time. Okay, is J negative four? Ne ah, my computer. Am I right? Somebody check my arithmetics. 
and k is this. Oh, that's easy. That's eight. You with me? You with me? And equation of the line, I'm gonna do it over here with blue color now. So equation of the line is till n times well, this thingy. Now I'm gonna, I'm not gonna throw just point slow form. So we have x plus one from this point and y minus two from that point and z minus one from this point is equal to zero. You get it? So we use two x plus one. This is almost point slow form, negative four y minus 2 and plus 8, ah, wrong notation. z minus 1 is equal to 0, and that gives us x minus 2y plus 4z is equal to everything on the other side. I believe it gives you negative 1, eh? How about that? First thing is, do we have to show that these things don't intersect? Do they even say? Because if they intersect, then the distance between the two lines is zero, isn't it? How do you show that they don't intersect? Yeah, let's start right there. That's a good place to start. I'm calling this one and these guys two to distinguish two lines. Okay, now what we have to do is if they intersect, then they have to occupy the same space at the same time, right? Say yes. Okay, so I'm going to have to set these things equal to each other. So x1 is equal to, and that t is equal to s minus 1, and then y1 is equal to y2. Am I writing too small? And that gives us t is equal to 2s, OK? Right there, we already have a systems equation, right? So let's solve it. So second equation minus first equation tells you s is equal to 1, right? Do you see s is equal to 1? And then what is t, is e t equal to? Wait, s is equal to 1? No. s is equal to... Yeah, if I do second one minus first one, s is equal to 1. That tells you t is equal to 1 half then. Are you with me? Okay, now we're going to plug it into the third one z1 then is equal to t is equal to one half so it's z1 coordinate is equal to one half you know what i'm saying z2 coordinate you have to plug it into x1 x y1 and all of that i mean they those two will give you the same coordinate but the third one z 3s so this is three see they don't intersect you know what i'm saying they're skewed one line the other do you see that reasoning Mr. Kim, yeah. how did you get that t is equal to one half? Because from here t is equal to 2s. Oh my god, t is equal to 2. <laughs> I'm so glad you caught it, right? Wait, doesn't s equal negative 1? Do I not know how to do algebra? I think it's this like minus that, so... so S yeah. is equal to negative one, huh? Oh my God. Then T is equal to negative two. Oh, so Z1 is equal to negative two. This is negative two. And then Z2 is equal to three S, right? So this is negative three. Okay. And if you, you can check by plugging it into x1, y1, x2, y2, and that'll give you the same, meaning these two lines, 
at that coordinate point. X, if the X and Y, if you're looking at it this way, X and Y happens to be on top of each other and on Z axis, this is really not, really, there's a gap between the two. You want me to put it in 3D graph and show you, or can you imagine that much? I mean, it's not that much trouble, but if you want to see it, we'll see it. If you don't have to see it, we don't have to see it. So make your decision. Dang, children, either you want to see it or you don't want to see it. Express your opinion. Um, I guess we can see it. Oh, OK, like, was that so hard? Right. If the, if this, that is, if this computer doesn't crash. OK. So Enter this 3D equation, x, y, z is equal to t, 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 right? t. Okay, and then I'm going to do another equation while I'm at it. y, z is equal to, this we'll still have to use t. So this is t minus 1. Second one is 2t. And then third one is 3t. Okay. Okay, two lines. I'm going to change the parameter. T from, is that T? No, that's not T. This is T. From negative 10 to positive 10. Do you see two lines that are skew? Let me change the color. Red shows up. Ah, so I think you can see it. You know what I'm saying? So what I did earlier is if looking at from the top view, kind of like this, and then find the intersection or what appears to be the intersection. But if you rotate it around, there's a gap between the two. You know what I'm saying? So they're not at the same height. There, that's a good angle right there. You get it? Okay, wow. Okay, this, make, this will make a great recording. Okay, now, so we can imagine this. Now, this is a preliminary work, but now we'll find the distance between the two. What is the distance between the two plane? Well, let's say one line is in that orientation. And let's say another line is in like this orientation, like this. I'm going to put it in different colors, right? But distance between the two, let's say, it's like somewhere here to somewhere down here vertically. I'm going to put that in black. So what we have to make sure is this is 90 degrees right there. And this is 90 degrees right there. You get it? That distance is what we're looking at. How do we do it? What we do is we put planes on top. We parallel planes, one includes, one contains this line and the other one containing this line. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the whole idea. So if we are putting planes like this, so one plane will have to be in this thingy, and that's blue plane. I'm gonna color code everything. That's a blue plane. And I need red plane containing this plane, how, let's see how I can throw this. Something like that. That's ugly, right? Now I can do better than that. What are you doing? Oh, that's so much better, right? Two planes. These are parallel planes containing each line. And then this is exactly the same thing as distance between two planes. You get it? OK, wait, wait, wait. Can we say then this is the distance between 
point to a plane and we just pick any point up here. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So let's write of these things, right? So this is the first one. This one is, let's say, red. I'm going to change the color of this to red. So we can distinguish which is which, right? So in order to do point slope form, well, first of all, we need a normal vector, right? So we go through the normal vector. And normal vector has to be common between these two. This is your normal vector. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm going to call that normal vector n. OK. <laughs> Undo. OK, n. Things. Ah, normal vector n. OK. Let's calculate those two normal vectors, OK? How do we do this, right? Think about, let's think about this. First, these two equation of the lines, they both come with the velocity vectors, correct? So one of them will, let's say, go right here. Why wouldn't it throw it? This computer is really glitchy today. OK, let's throw. Oh, it just threw. Huh. I guess we can throw this one. Let's throw that velocity vector right there. OK, they both come with their own velocity vectors. So this velocity vector, I'm going to write it here, V right here of 1 is 1, 1, 1. Do you see it? Direction of this line is 1, 1, 1. And this, I'm going to name it V2. This, of course, is 1, 2, 3. Good. Direction of this vector, 1, 2, 3. And I need my n. How do we create a vector that is perpendicular to two given vectors? Cross product, right? That's the one convenient thing about cross product. So let's do that. So we have i, j, K and one, 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 and one, two, three. So crossing the two, so we'll have I, this minus this. We have one, right? And J negative, so this minus that. So one minus three, negative two A. And then lastly K, this minus this, one. Okay, that normal vector is 1, negative 2, 1. You with me so far? Okay, now all we have to do is we need a point, two different points, right? Connecting the two. I'm totally going with this point. Right there. 0, 0, 0. Ain't that a convenient point? Right? Okay, I'm going with another point, let's say here. Oh, that needs to be a different color. That is a blue. I'm going with any point. Oh, why? Zeros here for S's, right? So negative one, zero, zero is a convenient point. Negative one, zero, zero. Okay, now I need this vector, which I'm going to draw. I need a vector connecting those two. Let's make that green vector now. And I'm going to call that vector R. Picture is getting a little crowded. And that, of course, is negative 1, 0, 0, isn't it? Because this happens to be origin right here. You get it? Say yes. Now we are almost done. Pressing this thing down. What? Pressing this thing down a little bit. OK, now it is just projection now, isn't it? So my distance is. Do we, can I just do a dot product or do you want me to write down n dot r? And hmm. remember this. 
that's how you find the distance between a point to a plane. And this will be. OK, let's start it. Starting this thingy with that thingy, you only get one, right? Over. Normal vector. Magnitude is that one four six. How about that? So I'm going to erase that. So it's one over square root of six. How about that? Hey?